Hi, welcome to the lecture on software engineering. The topic for today is testing, software testing. So in this lecture, we are going to concentrate on three different parts. First one is testing on conventional apps. The second part covers testing on web apps. And the third part covers testing on mobile apps. So these are the topics that we are going to cover for today. So to start with the fundamentals of testing, if you talk of the concept of testing, so the main objective of testing is to find errors in the program. So what is a good test? A good test has a high probability of finding an error. So whenever you write a test case, what should you keep in mind? So you should always keep in mind that a well-designed test case needs to detect maximum number of errors in the minimum amount of time. So the basic goal of testing is to find maximum errors with minimum effort. So testability is how easily a program could be tested. If you talk of characteristics of testing, so what are the testability characteristics? The first one is operability. So how easy it is to operate. Next is observability. So what you see is what you test. The next one is controllability. So the better you have control of the software, testing can be automated as far as possible so that errors can be minimized. Next is decomposability. Decomposability basically talks of how do you control the scope of testing so that problems could be isolated easily and you do a smart test. Then you have simplicity. So the lesser there is to test, the more quickly you can complete it. Then stability. Fewer the changes, fewer the disruptions to testing. <coughs> and understandability, the more information we have, the smarter we can test. These are certain testability characteristics. So what are the test characteristics? A good test has a high probability of finding an error. It is not redundant. It should be best of the breed and it is neither too simple nor too complex. So considering these four key test characteristics, basically testing is divided into two broad categories. One is called the black box testing, the other one is called the white box testing. When you talk of black box testing, Black box testing as the name indicates, you know, everything is considered to be a black box. So you give some input, there is something that happens inside, you get some output. So, you know, whatever happens inside is you know, not known to us. So it is basically considered as a black box. So here I do not consider the internal logical structure of the software. So basically, black box testing is used for testing at the interfaces. The next one is called the white box testing. So white box testing basically tests what you call it as the internal logical parts of the software and the components, the collaboration among them and all other aspects will be tested in the white box testing. So if you look at white box testing, otherwise termed as a glass box or a structural testing, this will basically test the control structure as part of the component level design. So whenever you write suitable test cases for white box testing, what you need to keep in mind? You need to keep in mind that all independent paths are exercised at least once. Whenever you have any kind of a logical decision to make that is true or false, then both conditions need to be satisfied at some point of time. Then all loops 
should be executed at their boundaries, check for operational bounds and look for internal data structures as well. So when we look at all of these things, so you need to make sure that whenever you write a suitable test case for all of these things, so you need to give suitable input so that you know all of these things are satisfied at least once. When you look at a black box testing, a black box testing is also called a behavioral or functional testing. So this basically focuses on the functional requirements of the software. So where if you look at a black box testing, you know, you have a set of input conditions and then you check the functional requirements of a program. So if you look into the concepts of black box and you know white box testing, we can never say you know black box testing is a replacement for white box or vice versa. Basically black box testing and white box testing are complementary approaches. So that is very important to note that you know they are all complementary approaches and each one has a very specific job to do and so you know either one of them cannot replace the other one as well which you need to remember. So what does a black box testing basically test? A black box testing basically checks for incorrect or missing functions, interface errors, errors in the data structure, performance, initialization and termination errors. So normally if you look at the concept of a white box testing, a white box testing is basically performed early in the testing process and a black box testing basically is applied at later stages of testing. So one technique for black box testing is called graph based testing. If you look at a graph based testing method, so we have certain objects that are modeled in software and you know some kind of connections that basically show the relationships between objects. So once you are able to design such a graph, the next step is to probably write suitable test cases that would obviously verify if all the objects have the expected relationship with one another that is what is called the graph based testing methods. So how to derive test cases? Test cases could obviously be derived by traversing the graph and covering each of the relationships shown between objects. So the main objective of graph based testing is to probably find errors in the relationships between objects. The next kind of testing is called equivalence partitioning. Equivalence partitioning is also a black box testing method. As the term uh, indicates equivalence partitioning, I divide the input domain of a program into classes of data and from that I would probably derive suitable test cases. So if you look at an equivalence class, it will represent both valid and invalid states for input conditions. Then you have something called the boundary value analysis BVA. This is also an important technique to probably detect errors because as the term indicates boundary value analysis, I'm probably trying to take values that lie on the boundary and then do an analysis. So rather than taking values from the center, I probably take values from the boundaries. So as per research, it very clearly specifies that maximum number of errors are detected at the boundaries. So this kind of a technique basically complements equivalence partitioning. So basically BVA selects values at the edges of the class and then you check for errors. 
So till now, whatever we have seen, we could probably have a quick summary. So the basic objective of writing a test case is to find maximum number of errors in a program with minimal effort. So for this, we have two broad categories of testing, namely black box testing and white box testing. White box testing focuses on the program control structure, whereas black box testing basically focuses on the functional requirements of the program and I am not bothered about the internal working of the program in black box testing. Now we move on into very specific concepts. To start with testing web applications. If you test a ki any kind of a web app, what am I interested in? There are several dimensions of quality, right from content to function, structure, usability, navigability, security, compatibility, performance, interoperability, etc. So what are the kind of errors that normally are encountered in a web app environment? So many types of errors are normally encountered on the client side. So normally you will often see a symptom of the error, not the error itself. So a web app is basically implemented with a number of different configurations, different variety of environments. So it will be very difficult to reproduce an error outside the environment. Some of the errors might occur because of incorrect design, improper HTML coding and so on. The web apps normally reside in what is called a client server architecture. So basically, you know, there are three tiers, client, server, network and so on. And hence it might be very difficult to find where the error lies. Certain times, you know, the errors might be in static operating environment. Sometimes, you know, the errors might be in a dynamic operating environment, which is again very difficult to detect. So whenever you look at testing strategies for the web apps, so you need to probably look at the content model, the interface model, the design model, the UI and so on. There are different kinds of testing to probably detect maximum number of errors from the web app. So when you want to look at use cases, you look at the interface model, navigation errors could be detected looking at the design model and probably errors in the navigation or presentation could be detected from the UI and so on. You also have some other kinds of tests like the security test, performance test and so on to detect errors in a web app. So in order to carry out any kinds of tests, it is important to do what is called a test planning. So what do we basically do in a test plan? So we identify the task set, the work products, the manner or the procedure in which you know the results will be evaluated, recorded and reused. So you develop basically a test plan. Then we have the testing process as indicated in this diagram which is shown in the form of a pyramid. So you have right from component design to interface design on the pyramid and different kinds of testing for each of the suitable design models. When you look at content testing, content testing basically uncovers syntactic errors like the typos or grammar mistakes, semantic errors which basically talks of the meaning of the information and also it can detect organization or structure of the content presented to the end user wherever there are errors in that part it can obviously detect. So. One kind of content testing is the database testing. So that you can do, for example, web app interface with sophisticated DBMS are built, dynamic objects are created and data acquired from a database. So for example, if it is a stock market, equities database is there, relevant databases are extracted, objects are organized and then you do a content testing. 
so this example is again very specific to dbms so the original client side request is rarely presented in the form that can be input to a dbms so you probably need to write suitable test cases to uncover errors so raw data must be transmitted to the server formatted properly and then again transmitted back to the client that is also important then you have something called the ui testing so ui testing basically happens at three distinct points the first is requirements analysis the interface model is reviewed at that time then during design the interface model is reviewed and then during testing the focus shifts to the execution of application specific aspects of the ui so if you look at interface testing strategy so basically this strategy will uncover errors related to the ui that is for example errors in the proper execution of a menu link or for example semantics of navigation or content display and so on so we basically test for the links forms client side scripting dhtml the pop up windows streaming content cookies and application specific interfaces as well if you look at usability testing the usability testing can be probably projected at different levels of abstraction for example it could be the usability of a specific interface mechanism like a form it could be for a complete web page or it could be for a complete web app so you can define the usability testing at various levels of abstraction so you can look for probably interactivity layout readability aesthetics time sensitivity personalization accessibility and display characteristics so this figure probably illustrates the set of assessment grades you could probably uh, give to the users to select and accordingly you can see ease of use is it simple effective awkward difficult and so on whether the in information is clear enough informative somewhat ambiguous is it confusing you know something like this you can give on a scale and then ask users to select then we have something called the compatibility testing compatibility testing basically gains importance because you know there are different computers different os different browsers different network connection speeds and so on you know the computing configuration is basically different different uh, you know even the resolution of the display is different nowadays right? right right from you can connect it to a television or you can connect it to a mobile or you connect it to a desktop you connect it to a laptop you connect it to a tablet you know the display resolution definitely changes connection speeds are very much obvious you know you know you write from a wireless to wired to fiber optic and so on the operating system definitely varies from windows to linux to ubuntu to mac os to probably symbian or android whatever you can call browsers are numerous you know right from chrome to firefox to whatever you can call each one might require a suitable plugin right so all of these things need to be properly tested before your web app goes online and that is what is basically done in a compatibility testing so what you basically do is you know there are numerous kinds of things you cannot work out for all of these numerous configurations put a combination permutation practically not possible so what you basically do you look at a set of commonly encountered configurations and their variants and then probably you create a tree structure identify the platform the display device the os browser and so on the connection speed and all of these related information can be represented in the form of a hierarchical tree structure write suitable compatibility validation test cases for all of these things see to that you accomplish all of these things uncover maximum number of errors trace it 
and then probably try to correct it before your web app goes online. So when you look at this configuration testing, you know, this variability is instability or two key things, you know, that pose a challenge for me. Even the hardware, OS, storage capacity are all going to be very difficult for me to predict. So what normally will happen is the client side environment is more prone to errors because, you know, it is always subtle and significant, you know. So what we basically do is, you know, you basically cannot exercise every possible configuration. So what I can do is probably have a probable client side and server side configuration and then probably run configuration testing, isolate errors and then correct them and then only make your web app to go online. You also have a very important testing to make that is called the security testing. Security testing is a very very complex subject both the client side and server side environment are definitely prone to security attacks. Attacks may come from external hackers, disgruntled employees, dishonest competitors, anybody who wishes to steal sensitive information, modify its content or degrade the performance or he can simply probably hack into your system to embarrass you or to embarrass your business or organization. This can definitely happen for anybody and security testing gains importance because of this. So basically security testing is to probe the vulnerabilities in the client side environment and so you need to look at the domains that can be attacked, uncover the weaknesses, look at vulnerabilities both on the client side and server side including the DOS, the denial of service attack. Also look at server side databases that can be accessed without authorization for data theft and then you need to probably do security testing. According to the OWASP foundation which lists about top 10 attacks, these three are major, injection attacks, broken access control and what we call it as the cross side scripting or three common attacks listed in the top 10 by the OWASP. If you look at performance testing, performance testing is basically used to uncover performance problems that might result from a lack of server side resources, inappropriate bandwidth and so on. So the intent is basically twofold to understand how the system responds to loading based on the number of users, number of transactions etc and also to collect metrics that will lead to design modifications so that I can improve my performance. So whenever you want to do performance testing there are a set of questions that obviously you need to find out answers for. For example, does performance degradation have an impact on system security? What happens when loads that are greater than the maximum server capacity are applied? and so on. These are certain questions that are listed. Then you have something called load testing. The basic objective of load testing is to see how your web app and its server side will respond to various loading conditions. So you need to obviously apply what is called the permutation for which there are three variables you should always remember N, T, D. N stands for number of concurrent users, T stands for number of online transactions per unit time and D stands for data load. So the basic objective of this testing is to see how this NTD will vary and accordingly you can probably compute you know how much of load could probably a system could bear. So whenever you want to compute the throughput, the formula for computing the throughput P is very very simple which is a product of the N, T and D. For instance, look at this example, interesting one. Consider a popular sports site. 
At any point of time, let us assume there are 20,000 concurrent users who submit a request. And this comes every two minutes on an average. Each transaction would probably require 3 KB of data to be downloaded. How to calculate the throughput? Throughput will be P, which is a product of all of these things, which roughly works out to 4 Mbps. So the network connection, obviously, for the server should have to support this kind of a data rate. And you need to do a lot of testing to make sure, this is only an example, you know, to make sure you know that it does and supports this throughput of 4 Mbps. Then, uh, if you look at stress testing, uh, stress testing is a continuation of load testing. Instead of uh, load testing, uh, basically test if using these three variables NTD, whether you can meet the throughput, but stress testing basically forces to meet and exceed the operational limits. When you do a stress testing, you want to ensure certain things. Does the system degrade gently or does it shut down suddenly when limits are exceeded? Does your software generate a server not available message? Are users aware that they cannot reach your server? Are transactions lost as capacity is exceeded? If it is lost, then there is a very major problem with you especially in kinds of transactions like banking if you exceed the limit and the transaction is lost you know you are going to be in deep trouble because it involves money so if you look at the overall summary of what we have discussed now with respect to the web apps the goal of a web app testing is to exercise each of these in many dimensions of the quality find errors uncover issues and at the end of the day meet quality so that is why we basically focus on all of these things like performance compatibility interoperability security content and so on if you look at testing mobile apps so uh, this is a very important testing because mobile app testing uh, is very important because numerous users are there for mobile apps there are several important questions that you need to probably ask when you create a testing strategy for a mobile app very specifically. Should I have to build a fully functional prototype before you test with users? Should you test with the user's device or provide a device for testing? What are the devices and what are the user groups that you need to include in testing? So when you talk of lab testing versus remote testing, pros and cons need to be analyzed for both of these. Now looking at the testing guidelines for mobile app testing, you always need to probably look at two things, the network, the device landscape before you probably address any issues. You should always conduct a test in an uncontrolled real world condition only. Whenever you do a mobile app testing, you always make sure that you select the right automation tool. You always need to check for end-to-end -end flow at least once. You also need to perform performance testing, the GUI, the graphical user interface testing and compatibility testing. And for all of these three things, please use only the actual device. Then whenever you measure performance, it is always good to measure performance in a wireless traffic so that definitely it will be improved for wired. So whenever you look at a mobile app testing, we have prepared a checklist of what are the things you probably need to check. Conceptual, unit and system, the UX, stability, connectivity, performance, device compatibility, security and more importantly certification so we try to prepare a build a test matrix what is a test matrix here it is called wdpm weighted device 
platform matrix this basically covers you know devices on the rows the operating systems on the columns so what we basically do here is to help and prioritize the device context combination so that i would probably test the most important ones first so that is where the ranking comes here so ranking of 3 has higher priority than ranking of 7 or 9 and so on so that is important to do that so list the important os variants as the matrix column list the targeted devices as the matrix lows assign a ranking of 0 to 10 which basically indicates the relative importance it is always good to say you know 3 has higher priority than 8 or 9 then you compute the product of each pair of rankings and enter each product as a cell entry in the matrix and then you can start doing these things so it is always important to do you know stress testing also on the mobile app stress testing for mobile apps will always attempt to find errors that will occur in extreme operating conditions for example there might be number of apps that might run on the background my mobile might have been infected with a virus or a malware or you know that would be some kind of possibility where you know there is an attempt to take over my device and use it as to spread spam so forcing the mobile app to process inordinately large number of transactions or storing inordinately large quantities of data on the device so all of these factors need to be considered whenever you do stress testing on the mobile app then what we do is to do a testing in a production environment so it is called testing in the wild so that is important where you do testing in a production environment where you know it is going to be adverse conditions unpredictable environment i may have an outdated browser or a plugin my hardware might be unique my connectivity is not good and this is what is called testing in the wild whenever you want to create this environment in house it is going to be an, in, an expensive affair and it's always an error prone process so nowadays we have moved to what is called a cloud based testing cloud based testing is less costly it is a standardized infrastructure you know you have a pre configured software images and so on and you can obviously do cloud based testing which is definitely advantageous in the real time nowadays so considering the spectrum of user interaction we look at gesture testing voice input and recognition virtual keyboard input and alerts and extraordinary conditions so in summary the goal of a mobile app testing is to exercise each of the dimensions of mobile app quality and the objective is to find maximum number of errors with minimum amount of effort and Testing will obviously focus on content, navigability, performance, compatibility, interoperability and so on. And basically it incorporates reviews and usability assessments as the mobile app is designed and tests are conducted. And then you can probably deploy the same on the actual device. So hope this video lecture would have given you an overall understanding of the testing strategies on conventional applications that is traditional then web apps and mobile apps thank you so stay tuned for more lectures on software engineering thank you once again